I'm Diane Bass. I'm a federal criminal defense attorney in Orange County, California. And I want to talk to you about sentencing in federal court and what that looks like, what you can expect when you attend or appear for your sentencing hearing. So you're going to walk into the courtroom with your attorney. You're going to be sitting at counsel table. The U.S. attorney will be sitting at the other side of the courtroom. Either you will be here and here or here and here. The judge is in front of you. There's a court reporter. And then there's an audience behind you of whoever you want to bring to the sentencing hearing. And of course, this is during normal times, not during COVID times. The courtroom you can fill with as many of your family members and friends as you want. Now, hopefully I've collected all sorts of great information about you, letters from all of these people who want to support you, who can't be present during your hearing. And the judge will have already read those things so that you don't have to have people get up and speak for you. Generally, most judges don't allow that, although there are extraordinary cases when extraordinary judges who will allow that. I had one judge who let 60 people speak for a client of mine and the hearing went on for two days. But that is a very, very exceptional judge, an exceptional situation. So what's going to happen? The first thing that's going to happen is that you are going to raise your right hand and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And the judge is going to ask me if I've spoken with you, if there's any reason that we can't go forward. And then the judge is going to go through the federal sentencing factors. So the federal sentencing guidelines are a huge part of federal sentencing, and I have another video about that. But the judge is going to make sure that the lawyers are basically on the same page and that we agree to what the applicable guidelines are. Once we get through that, the judge will have read our sentencing memos. So I will prepare a sentencing memo that can be as long as I want it to be, and I can attach as many exhibits as I want, including letters, photos, anything that I think is going to impress the judge or make the judge rule in your favor, a psychological evaluation, medical records, any number of things that I will have given to the judge at least two weeks before sentencing. So the judge will know a lot about you and your case, pretty much everything before we get to the sentencing hearing. The government will also have filed a sentencing memo arguing what they think is the appropriate sentence. So the judge has pretty much made up his or her mind when they come out for sentencing, but we do have a chance to argue. So we stand at the lectern or we sit at council table, depending on the judge. And I like to stand at the lectern. I get I feel more secure standing there. I feel more of a sense of authority. And I will argue to the judge what I think the appropriate sentence is and why. And I'll go through the main points of my arguments. If I feel like he or she is leaning a certain way, I may just focus on those issues. Some judges will do a tentative. There's one judge in particular I know who will do a tentative. So if there are issues he wants clarification on, we'll just talk about those things. Then the government gets to go, and then I get to argue just to respond to anything that the government may have said that I think really needs to be addressed. The next thing that happens is that you have a right to allocution. So what does that mean? Allocution means that you get to stand up and talk to the judge. And I have heard federal judges say that the only thing that can change their mind during a sentencing hearing is what they hear from the defendant or the client themselves. So they want to feel, you've already written a letter, you've already expressed your remorse, but they want to feel your sincere remorse. They want to connect with you. They want to look in your eyes and see that you really truly understand any harm that may have been caused by your offense and that you truly do get it and that you have changed and that they're not going to see you in their court again. So this is your moment. This is your day in court and this is your chance to be heard. Once we sit down, the judge will make a decision about what the sentence is going to be and the judge will pronounce the sentence. The judge will give us all of the reasons and then they will go through a dialogue that they are required to go through saying, that they've taken into consideration all of the, these different factors. The judge has to consider the nature and circumstances of the offense, the history and characteristics of the defendant. They have to take into account the seriousness of the offense and make a punishment that takes that into account as well. And they have to consider any restitution, if there's money that has to be paid back, and how is that going to happen? Or have you already done that? Which would be an extraordinary step in the right direction. The judge will state the reasons for the sentence and then impose the sentence. In most cases, if you are out on bond, you are out of custody, the judge will allow you to remain out of custody until you surrender, if you have to surrender, to the Bureau of Prisons, which gives the Bureau of Prisons an opportunity 
to find a prison hopefully close to home so that your friends, family, and loved ones can come and visit you. And so you generally will get six weeks, maybe more depending, especially if you're right around the holidays or if you have some sort of a medical issue that you need to take care of or you need to get your, your finances in order. Judges will generally be pretty flexible, but they won't generally go beyond a few months. So that is the sentencing process, what actually happens in the courtroom when you go to be sentenced in a federal case.